I grew up in the family hotel here in Newquay and it's what my family have always done and what all branches of my family still do now. We knew that the hotel was for sale and we had a prowl around. We ended up buying the place on the 12th of March 1979 and we were as young as you could possibly imagine people to be to own a property like this. Yeah, the, the place was really sort of a bit um, run down and so things didn't work behind the scenes and guests would come along and say, oh, I need to speak to Mrs Armstrong because I've got a problem about this. And I say, yes, can I help you? And they go, no, I want to speak to Mrs Armstrong. And I say, yes, may I help you? No, where's your mother? <laughs> and I can remember fairly recently a guest said to me who still has come, she said, well, it was really rather like Faulty Towers, but we felt we couldn't complain because everybody was so nice. <laughs> I suppose we had the resilience of youth and the enthusiasm, and we kept going and kept going, and 40 years later, we're still keeping going. Um, families keep returning to the headland, I think, because it is a world-class position, and, and now we get families who might come six times a year, um, sometimes with their children, and now their grandchildren, you know, the, the generations just keep on coming, which is lovely. So when we took the hotel over in March 79, there were four employees who came with the hotel. And for the next year or two, we used to close every year, end of October, and open on Maundy Thursday, just before Easter. And we would employ perhaps 12 people, senior people, um, a chef, a housekeeper. We now employ about 180 people in the summer and about 160 year round. That's how different it is. The Witches film has, was absolutely wonderful for, for us at the time. They were so professional, a wonderful team and Angelica Houston played the Grand High Witch. She actually stayed in this room and she said it had the best view of any of the place, any hotel room she'd ever stayed in in the world and Rowan Atkinson played the hotel manager, who, in my personal experience, does resemble Mr Bean quite a lot. He'd come upstairs, put the plug in the bath, turned the taps full on, and had gone to bed to sleep. So we had this enormous flood. It wrote off their production office. Absolutely charming, but, but uh, a bit dotty. <laughs> Our long service award dinner that we give every year, um, we have an award system where we award a Cornish tin badge with an H on it, one H for every five years the employee has worked here. It is now a very well attended event and I think the last time we did it we were 26 sitting around the table, um, all with more than five years service and, and several with over 10 years. The longest staff member who walked into the hotel the same day as us is Headley Kent and He's, he's celebrating 40 years this year. I, I think for me that people, if you work here, people would describe it as it's one big family. And I think people here are really proud to work here. They love doing what they do. They love to delight the guests. The Armstrongs um, very much embrace that. Um, so we are empowered to be able to kind of run our departments as our own little mini businesses, but work with one another to, to achieve that. So it's very much a team effort. Um, so when you achieve something, it feels like we've achieved that together. So. It is a curious building to find on a cliff edge, and now we, we cherish it, we, we love it to bits. Yes, it's, it's very tiresome to build, and some of the building techniques from that era make for difficult weatherproofing, but we refer to our fine sea views ra rather than our exposure factor. Whatever we do, we do it very properly. To take a cheap way out to try and cover something up um, for a short term just does not work. If, if we don't um, do, say, something like 10 rooms a year redecorating, um, we end up, even then, our oldest rooms will be 10 years old, uh, so we, we have to keep on at it, have to keep on at it. The fact we are built on sand is, does add an extra dimension to, to things here. <laughs> we are used to it and we just get on with it. Carol and I don't use the word iconic, but it seems to creep into most people's descriptions of, of the headland now. Yeah, it's become very much part of the community. And when we build the Aqua Centre, the new swimming pool complex, it'll have five swimming pools in it. And one of the things is a 25 metre training pool. 
and we hope local sportsmen will come up and train here. You know, we want to be part of the community. We want to be open to outsiders for a club membership and we're hoping that we will embrace the community even more than we do at the moment. We make decisions that are not bottom line decisions. We make decisions for our guests and for our staff. And by doing that, you create something which I think is, is not what you find in, in a, a corporate hotel or one where there are people far away just wanting the figures in and what's your profit. So I think that's, that's the difference of a privately owned hotel and what we hope will always happen for the Headland as well. Where we want it to be, um, we don't know. We're still struggling away with it. Or perhaps, perhaps we've given up the struggle. Perhaps nowadays we're striving away at it. To be successful in life, you always have to work hard. So it is hard work, but actually it's great fun. And it's very interesting. And it's lovely to live in Cornwall, because actually where else would you want to live? Everyone comes to us. So.